I want to uh, give you an idea as to uh, some of the um, activities we have, uh, especially pertaining to uh, East, and that is uh, how to give you a, a feel as to how multidisciplinary uh, the energy field is. And uh, about April of 2007, I got a, just right after we established the Luger Center, I got a call from a faculty member from School of Medicine saying that I'm interested in participating in your activities at the Luger Center. And I said, well, uh, we're not thinking of using human beings to produce electricity yet. Uh, if that's what you have in mind. <laughs> and then he explained uh, um, what he does, and he has been an yeast and enzyme expert for over 25 years. And what he studied before was your digestive system, how yeast and enzyme work in your body and help you absorb energy. And he said that same yeast is what you use to produce ethanol. Okay, and through his 20 years of study, he has identified all the genes in the yeast. Okay, and he also figured out that the yeast that we use to produce ethanol has a habit of using a certain kind of sugar that's called alpha D glucose. Okay, and that's the only thing it prefers. And it's just like a human being like myself. Uh, when there's good food on the table, I never take anything else. I focus on the good food or on the food that I prefer. Okay, yeast is the same way. You have all these different types of uh, carbon sources like alpha D glucose, uh, D xylose, and so forth. But yeast doesn't want to even consider. They just focus narrowly on alpha D glucose and as long as you have just a very tiny fraction of that alpha D glucose left in that brewing soup, then it's going to try to consume that. It's going to ignore everything else. But if you put yeast in a environment where there's absolutely zero alpha D glucose, but there is this other type of sugar, then the yeast is going to think, oh, I'm going to starve if I don't start eating these other food. It's just like me, if I'm really hungry and I put in an environment where there's a shortage of food, I would eat whatever that's put in front of me, right? So yeast can adapt that way also, and after a few hours, they can digest these other type of uh, food just as easily. So what he did was, well, since he knows all the different genomes and he knows which part is the part that allows a yeast to recognize what sugar is in there, he knocked that out so that the yeast becomes blind in the way to alpha D glucose. And as soon as that happens, then the yeast is tricked into thinking, oh, there is no food that I like, so I'd better start to adjust and adapt and take whatever come, comes my way. And uh, within a couple of hours, the yeast will begin to produce so-called cellulosic ethanol. And this is a uh, he currently has uh, a small company, and they're also working with uh, the largest uh, yeast producer in the country called Poet um, in trying to test uh, out some of these uh, product in a real production environment. 